Hi everyone, as you know my name is Harry. Um, a little bit about me, I'm 12 years old. I live in Gippsland. Um, I do a lot of baking and um, I've been an entrepreneur for as long as I can remember. I spend a lot of time with my animals. Um, we have cows, goats and chickens. Um, we always bottle fed them and they've been super friendly. I've always been around animals. Um, we used to have the cow super friendly where you could lay with her and sleep with her, be in the paddock with her constantly. I love being outdoors. In the picture on the far corner, I was always catching um, worms for the chickens. And in the other photos, this is when we went on our herping trips um, from Victoria to New South Wales. Again, this is me outside. Um, there's one of me walking Mount Cannibal, and this video here is me on my 10th birthday. Um, it wasn't that great of weather, so we were just jumping in puddles. Um, the entrepreneur side of me has been there since I was about six when I was getting rocks from my grandparents' garden and painting them and writing nice words on them and selling them back to them for a dollar. <laughs> Our rocks. Well done. Uh, as well as when I was nine and I was selling fresh drinks to locals um, like lemonade and orange juice. And then in when I was nine and ten in the bushfires, which got pretty close to our house. Um, I noticed that my parents, they were signing contracts because they're builders, and a lot of the money that they were donating to um, services were the fireys and the ambulance and things like that. Um, so I decided to fundraise for Wildlife Victoria and Warriors for Wildlife. Um, here again, the baking side of me um, how I started off my business, the starting money for my business, it was baking cakes and selling them. So the first one is one that we made for a friend for their 18th. Um, mine's the 12th, the 28th is my mum's, and then the 25th is my brother. And then that's a scrub pipe right there and a um, lace monitor that I made out of fondant. Here's the local market that we sell stuff at to feed our reptiles at the start. Um, this is Christmas and Easter market. Um, and we made a bunch of stuff and we have a really great outcome from there. The other way I used to make money for feeding my reptiles was offering people help with their animals. Um, since we live in a rural area, I did a lot of rural animals. So here's me um, looking after someone's cow while they're on a holiday. Um, and back to the baking thing, when I was 10 and 11, um, I was selling treats um, for people's Christmas table um, and decorating them in little boxes. And then 11, I was cleaning bins um, around my local area. And then I founded the business when I was 11 in 2022 just near the end, sort of in October. Uh, the business is Next to Nature with Harry, and it started kind of here with my first reptile memory when I was about one, and we were seeing reptiles in the backyard, as well as when I have had reptile encounters around um, near me, um, and at the pack and the show and things like that. So, just all the photos of over the years with the snakes and lizards at Reptile Encounters. This is at my birthday party, my fifth birthday party, um, where reptiles encounter, Reptile Encounters came to my birthday. And this is my 10th birthday party. So, I've always loved the larger reptiles as well. We've had a lot of different things over the time, and it's not just reptiles, they have also brought possums and all sorts of awesome things. And then my reptile exposure on holidays, one, this was in Thailand, there's a retic that I'm in the far corner, 
and then a sea turtle and a green iguana. <coughs> and then in Fiji, um, we went to a little reptile zoo and um, held a ground boa and a Fijian iguana. And then there was markets and things like that where they also had reptiles. And um, then we went to the Zulu Zoo, which was pretty awesome. It's in Tasmania. Came with some monkeys, a um, wombat, and this black headed python, as well as a bell space lacy. Um, we were also at the football club when we had snakes visit white um, like snake catchers, and they brought some snakes for everyone to handle at the football club. And then at Gumbai World, we do a lot of stuff there. Um, we love the reptile centre there. We're often on the um, walking track. And a lot of these photos are actually me there on my birthday. We do a lot of parking encounters there as well. Um, so there's the Junior Ranger experience that I was there for, as well as I was there um, just at their opening day, up there with the water parking in the corner. And down here is the wildlife trail where I spend most of my time at Gumbai. Oh. And this is some more parking <laughs> encounters, um, which are pretty cool. Um, especially with the large black haired python and Charlie the Darwin python. <clears throat> then there's the Brittleye, which I thought was awesome because we often spend most of our time sitting there looking at it through the enclosure. And there's Yindi, um, that we did the dingo experience with. Then here's probably my favourite reptile memory, where I was at Australia Zoo and just up here I was with a corn snake and I at the time it just came into the reptile um, hobby and I realised that you can't have corn snakes in Australia and unless you're a zoo and I was kind of just taking it all in and super excited just trying to remember everything about them because I thought I might never see it again. Then my mum, she implemented um, six week rest and reset breaks because we work a lot. Um, and this time we went to Queensland, so I planned the trips on herping and looking for reptiles and all that kind of stuff. Here we found a bunch of water dragons, which were pretty cool. Um, we did a lot of rainforest walks and waterfalls and things like that. And in the first photo where I'm jumping over there, there was a northern death adder, which we thought was pretty cool. Um, then we went for one in Pangula, New South Wales, where we saw a red belly black on the beach. Uh, a load of yellow bellied water skinks and a bunch of lace monitors including a bell space. So this is actually a mum in a termite mound. Um, we think she was digging out her babies. Uh, the next day that we came back we fed her and yeah it was an awesome experience seeing all these guys. Some of them didn't even run away, they just stayed there and it was pretty cool to see. And then also again I was 11 and this is um, another party um, here with my dad, but this is why I didn't get a reptile before I was 11, and it's because my brother here um, in that photo, he's scared of snakes, even though he's holding a lot of fat in there. Um, I think that we're slowly turning him as we have dad, but at the time we couldn't get a snake because of them being scared, so um, the deal was he turned 25 and then he had to move out. Uh, but he didn't end up moving out, so we got um, some snakes within six weeks of, oh, within nine days of the birthday. Um, we got a little stinkless python named Hercules. This is our first reptile. We got her about this time last year. She's a Gippsland water dragon. She's only about a year and a half old now. Um, and she's absolutely stunning with her nice aqua colours. Then, we got some blue tongues and we kind of just grew from there. So here's Shanghai, Roy and Charlie, our eastern blue tongues. Here's some more photos of them in their new tank. And then I think that the reason I love reptiles so much and do what I do is because they've just got such a good emotional intelligence. Like when I train my Aki's, you can tell that they are completely in tune with you like a dog would be, as well as their personality. Like she will nuzzle me and she, they all just have different personalities. Some of them will run, some of them will just walk around and not bother that you're even there. And some of them, they 
do those weird things like Nelson Link, and I find that that's just absolutely awesome. As well as there's so many interesting species in there. Um, for example, water pythons, I just find them awesome. As well as water dragons, I find them absolutely amazing. And things like that, there are some awesome species in there. So, what I love about owning my reptile business is I feel like when you do what you love, you never really work a day in your life. Um, and I just absolutely love reptile breeding. I love being around them. But I'm going to get into the business now. So next to me with Harry, um, we are a revolutionary reptile breeding business. We offer reptiles that are trained, friendly and suitable and best for your lifestyle. We love to find new ways of keeping and are always learning about reptiles and trying to teach others about reptiles. We have a cool quiz on our TAT profile page, which you can get by scanning that QR code up in the top corner. We match people with their ideal pet to suit their needs and lifestyle. Their pets are right, but the pets get the right match too. So they're properly cared for. Example, I ask their age, why they want the pet, the size of the pet, and their budget. Or whether they travel and how long they travel for. So if they travel for too long or a very long time, we can give them a snake so that they don't have to be there constantly looking after it. Just so that it doesn't get forgotten about. So I first started the reptile business when I was 11. I created documents and templates on Canva. Up here is my logo in the corner. I've got my um, business card down here and on all my enclosures I have a little information card about what they eat, their age, um, how, if they're friendly or not and just some general facts about them. Um, tips and tricks to know what ticks them or things like that so you know not to upset them. As well as our little training signs so when I'm training my front necks and things like that people don't come in and disturb me because it could freak them out. Um, so the, all these are made on Canva and ever since ever since I've done these, I've started writing a business plan and a risk management, risk management plan. Um, we have five species of reptiles in next to carry. We have three field neck liquids, um, three stems and spikers, five blue tongue lizards, including a blotch blue tongue, um, two red ackies, one Gibson water dragon and 14 eggs, five due to hatch any time now. And our Stimpsons is Gravid, um, which we are super excited about and we're taking expressions of interest for our Stimpsons and Aki eggs. Um, our Stimpsons are absolutely beautiful, reduced pattern and T plus Evans lines. Um, I love all these reptiles and I bought them all with my own money. I sold my motorbike and was saving for a horse, then I realised that reptiles are my passion, they're amazing pets, but they're also an amazing investment. I also train my reptiles so they can be handled and super friendly. I create slideshows to present to my parents about why it's such a great idea to get reptiles. That's how I first convinced them to turn it into a business. The slideshows are a persuasive piece in my work sometimes at school. Then I started to look at individual layouts the ROI and the cost involved. And then showed my parents that it was more than a hobby to me. My first snake was Hercules, a Stimson's python. He's 14 months old country and he is super friendly. We love him to bits. His owner had a lot of interest in this snake. We are so grateful that she chose us. And this was the snake that we bought nine days after the birthday. <laughs> as well as he came with the enclosure and he put the biggest smile on my face and we were super excited to have him. Again, Adam had a huge amount of inquiry and a long chat. Just he decided to sell to us after that. So this year is us receiving them and unboxing them. Salt, which is our male, who's a beautiful team plus at this line. Mum loves him, he's um, her favourite. Pepper is probably my favourite. She's a stunning reduced pattern female. 
Um, I bought them proven as a 13 egg in a fast pair, and they are currently gravid again. So here's salt in our tea glass on the left, and here's pepper on our right. I reckon she's absolutely stunning. So I love having this reptile business because I can hang out with my reptiles and play with them. And sure, there's a bit of care, but I think that it's kind of worth it with this. And I just love looking after them and I get to call it work. One of my favourite things about it is the excitement of breeding, hatching and all the other stuff involved in babies. And then some of the awesome people that I've met along the way are the people in the team at Amazing Amazon, Jurassic Jungle and Tony the Reptiles. They're always generous with their discussions and advice. And amazing keepers at Gunwire World that love spending time, that I love spending time with and sharing stories. As well as Peter Birch from Critic Camp and Adam of VHS. I'm so grateful for the support. I homeschooled last term in term four last year. Uh, my mum took me to some social networking events and things like that, where mum's in the building industry and mental health. So I got into that industry a little bit as well with Master Builders team. Um, who sent me this awesome care, back, care package. Um, we even won the prize at their golf day for the best loser. <laughs> <laughs> so, my mum took me along to some marketing and entrepreneur events hosted by a local council and I met some amazing people who I still keep in touch with. One of them is a government agency who even offered to work with me pro bono. It's through them that I developed a business plan after attending their business plan accelerator workshop. Mum and I also uh, did our basic um, rescue and relocation um, course. I fundraised for um, the fires, as you saw before, and I got a I got asked by Wildlife Victoria to come into their base because they wanted to meet me in person and say thank you. Um, so we went in there and it was an awesome conversation with them and their CEO. Um, they have a great crew over there and it's awesome to see behind the scenes. And it's just awesome to see the numbers on what they get pulled in for. Like half the time it's a blue tongue and someone thinks it's a snake, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, this was um, today at the entrepreneur event. I agreed to purchase a breeding pair of Atkins and three Grimnets. I was actually a bit worried about spending the money because they weren't proven. But that day, um, they had six eggs, which I was so lucky to um, end up getting. And he said he would give me them as a part of the sale, and it was just absolutely incredible, especially because people contacted him and he decided to go with me. And yeah, it was absolutely awesome and I'm so grateful. And this was our setup over the year from before we got them and now this is our current setup um, when we did get them. These guys have never been handled, they are for next, but I was determined to make them puppy dog tanks. Within three weeks I went they went from being filled up all the time and only were walking past the enclosure to coming out of the enclosure, going on your hand and arm and on your chest. And now, you can have people in the room while you're doing it. One of them has never even eaten the tongs, but now she does, and it's absolutely awesome. Claws now completely comes out of the enclosure and goes onto my chest, arms, and everywhere else, as well as Godzilla. Did you need a little bit more time, but I'm convinced that we can get her out. Check out this amazing training video of our progress. I'm so proud of Claws, of the progress she's made, and how much trust she has in me.
So this video here was the first time that I could get her onto my chest, which is a little bit awkward getting her off, but it was absolutely an amazing moment, and I was so impressed with her. So these, this is Digit and Claws, and I had to add this in because I thought they were just so cute, basking. Uh, this is my breeding pair, um, they came with the six eggs um, and I was super excited to have them because I've wanted Ackies for a little bit and I just thought they were absolutely awesome species. Um, and I didn't see them much when they first came here because they were hiding and it was a new place. Uh, and then not long after we saw them locked up underneath the tiles, we were super excited for eggs and then we had nine eggs in total now in the incubator. So yes, 15 eggs in the incubator, but unfortunately not many of the second clutch is viable, which is a bit of a shame, but they bred pretty close to when they last laid. So it was not that great, couldn't do much about it. These guys are still pretty timid, um, especially the male, but after three days, I got the female, named Precious, onto my hand and arm. She almost came in fully out of the enclosure, because she was just trying to get out all over me. So introducing Jaffa, our Blotch Blue Tongue and Yeti, our Eastern Blue Tongue, was an absolutely awesome moment because they were our first adult Blue Tongues, uh, which meant we could finally get a program started with them. Now, this one here, Yeti, he's named Yeti because um, Mum thought he was so big when we first got him, so we called him Yeti after the abominable the snowman. And then this one here is Jaffa. Um, we called him Jumper from Jumper the Hutt um, in Star Wars because he's so chunky. <laughs> anyway, another thing that Next Nature Harry is um, trying to change is because when I mention what I do to people that aren't reptile people, 95% of them will say, no thanks, they will make a funny face. For centuries, reptiles, especially snakes, have been made the bad guys, the villains, and dangerous in everything. But what I really want to teach people is that they're amazing pets and I need to educate about how amazing they are, and especially to the kids um, that are coming into the world and gonna get into the reptile industry. Um, what's next for Next Nature with Harry is a big question for us. Firstly, I'd love to get more reptiles today. I'd love to bring some cool morphs I plan to create my own range of bioactive enclosures and bedding. I've started breeding feeder insects and isopods and springtails and things like that. I want to do more talks like this to encourage young people to get into the industry, especially yeah, young people, because they're the future of the reptile industry. If we didn't have young people, there would be nothing after this. And I want to be the youngest reptile zoo owner in Australia. So to any kids out there who love reptiles, I hope you get into this hobby. It doesn't matter if you just have one visit, we all have to start somewhere. We need more reptiles, breeders, reptiles and breeders in the world. So hopefully you join us. That's half the reason I wanted to talk to you all today, is to get more young blood into the reptile breeding hobby. And let you know that if I can do it, you can do it too. Thank you everyone. This is my little thank you list as well. So Adam from VHS for this incredible opportunity. Max and Damien from the Amazing Amazon team and others at the Amazing Amazon store uh, for their support and generosity. Peter Birch of Pretty Cam for all the support and sharing my social media stories and posts as well as your encouragement. Your amazing keepers at Dubai World who encourage me constantly and are constantly helping me. All of the incredible people I've met on this journey so far. Thank you for the amazing people who have sold me animals and gave me that opportunity with their babies. And of course, I want to thank my mum and dad as well as my nan, 
Grandpa and my brother James for supporting me and being a part of my support group today. Is there any questions? So a question I did think I would have as um, the bites thing. Um, so uh, the bites have been bitten by a stingy. Um, they don't really hurt, which is why I encourage a lot of younger people to get into stingies. Because if you get bitten, it's not a big deal. Um, unless you keep your hand on the glass while you're coming out. Um, but I've learned now not to go in there in a thunderstorm or while they're breeding. Now, a little funny story that I want to share with everyone today to finish off was um, I heard a person selling feeder mice in my local area, kind of like four doors down. And we were talking about snakes and zits for a little bit, talking about our collection. And then he said, do you want to come check out our collection? And he said he had a couple of things but we did not imagine this in any way. He had saltwater crocodiles, olive pythons, red-bellied blacks, king browns, jungle pythons, Murray darlings. He had everything he could even think of. And he was just pulling all of it out and it was absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming today and listening to me talk. Thank you, Adam, and BHS for the opportunity and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks very much, Harry. That's a great job. All right, if we go over to Pip in uh, five minutes, uh, two minutes, you can see my.